when Apple announced that iPads could now have mouse support, a lot of people were actually getting ready for a new accessory to come out from Apple which would integrate touch controls into the iPad Pro's smart keyboard. Now, when it did eventually come out, the Magic Keyboard was not actually for everyone, um, especially for owners of iPad Pros with the home button still attached to it. Hello, darkness, my old kind of felt friend. like they just forgot about I've it. Come to talk with you. Lo and behold, Logitech actually did have a product in the pipeline that actually resolved this issue for most iPad or and iPad Pro users uh, that didn't have the specific uh, requirements to use the new Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro, specifically that it wasn't the, the new design and it didn't have the magnetic back. So today, we're going to have a look at the Logitech Combo Touch. Before we go any further, like this video, subscribe to our channel so you are always aware of new videos and a huge shout out to Tech360 TV that made this possible uh, with the guys from Logitech. Thank you very much. So one of the things I wanted to start this off with was with the obvious, right? Um, the materials being used between the smart keyboard and um, the combo touch. So. Um, if you look at the actual uh, problems uh, that I have the smart key keyboard and then we can see how that addresses or translates into the combo touch is that this particular product is uh, it looks nice when you first get it uh, it looks actually extremely polished but something comes very obvious when you start using it and if I I'm just gonna switch to the cam here um, there are, it frays, right? After some time in the usage of the uh, smart keyboard, it starts fraying like this. And it's not very nice uh, because Apple has a design aesthetic, which is, is really nice to look at. And you know, it, 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 it belays a certain uh, grace when you actually use their products. But when they start fraying, when accessories start fraying like this, um, it doesn't look nice at all. So. I'm just going to try to see whether you, I can get, get a zoom in of this. So if you can see this, it starts fraying like that and it's actually really not nice. Um, and you can start to see the wear and tear in the actual product. Now, this is actually my second case. Um, and the first one actually started crapping out on me. Um, buttons were not uh, being registered, etc, etc. And it was really annoying. Now, the the connection to the iPad is actually through the three ports here. And this is important because this is where the combo touch comes in as well. Um, in terms of build material, it's actually different. Combo touch, it has a extremely tough build into it. Um, the It's like a fabric um, material. It, it feels more durable. The sides of it f actually feel like they can actually take a lot more use uh, a lot more wear and tear um, and, and that's actually something that I very much welcome because I do not want to be carrying an iPad Pro with me around everywhere and the one of the issues that I have with it is that it looks like shit after some time uh, especially with the smart keyboard looking like as though um, I didn't take care of it but I actually did my best to kind of take care of it but it still started fraying so it didn't really bear up to um, daily usage um, it was great uh, in terms of using it, but there are some things that the Combo Touch actually resolves, um, and it's a lot of the things that we had in our wish list as iPad Pro users. So that covers the material usage, and that's a clear winner. The Combo Touch has a clear winner in terms of my confidence that it will actually last its uh, lifespan in moderately good wear, uh, or at least a lot better than how the smart uh, keyboard actually lasted out for me. So there is a backlit keyboard function here on the uh, Logitech um, and I'll show that to you in a, in, a, in a real life situation. It comes in very handy when I'm on the bed and I actually have an important email to type out. It makes it very easy to look at. But compared to this one, um, I will not be able to type in the dark with this one. It's more of like a step in the dark uh, with my fingers. And that's kind of annoying and it's great that this new product actually resolved that by giving us a keyboard uh, that actually addresses it. The Apple smart keyboards 
layout and buttons actually do not give you a full um, experience of using something that is actually seems like it's been fully thought out. Um, the reason for that is the combo touch has a whole host of um, function keys at the top of the keyboard. That actually gives us the ability to do a lot of things that um, our smart keyboard didn't allow us to do. For example, if I actually wanted to, um, uh, it, it has a lot of, of uses, right? It has a light, it has backlight keys, it has play, pause buttons, forward buttons, uh, audio, lock buttons. But the one button that I found myself using a lot was actually the home button. Now, in the smart keyboard, it didn't have that function, right? But here, if I had typed something and I wanted to go back to the previous uh, page, I would have to actually... Um, I would actually have to click this home button, which makes the experience kind of weird. It feels like it's not fully thought out. Um, but with the combo touch, when I have that button there and I want to go back to the home screen, all I have to do is just press that button and it goes back to the home screen. It feels more fully thought out. Um, if I'm not wrong, you can actually um, get that. Do you get that? Yeah, I think you get that in the Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro. but not for those of us who are still holding on to our iPad Pro 10.5s or iPads uh, that uh, are not in the new design aesthetic. Um, this is a huge welcome for me because I find myself using this button a lot more than I start uh, pressing the home button for, for any uh, usage. I only use it just specifically for activation of my user Apple user ID with the uh, fingerprint uh, identification. So that is actually a very welcome thing that I know that I wanted uh, and I do use a lot. So that's great. Let's talk about the angles uh, of usage that I can use this device in. Now, uh, Logitech has uh, broken it down to like four different uh, use modes, so to speak, but uh, you don't really have to go that far, right? This is the standard uh, angle that you can have the iPad in in the smart keyboard. And that's it. That, that's the that's your only stand. So if I was using it on a uh, on my on my lap, that's it. I, I would have to adjust the way I type and the way I sit according to what this particular device can actually support my uh, device. But with the Logitech, uh, you can see that it comes with the casing at the back here, and you can adjust it as much as you want. So this is your reading portfolio. Uh, you can go all the way down that low if you want to. Um, you can bring it up way high if you want to. Um, this range of movement is something that I truly welcome. Um, and it's something that I never had with this uh, device. It, it kind of really changes it up for me because I can then use it in the car now more comfortably. I can use it um, when I'm out and about uh, and I still have my iPad with me and that changes the way that I can actually use the iPad, right? Now, with a lot of keyboards, we've got to talk about the typing experience. Um, and the typing experience between the two devices are kind of comparing apples and oranges because the smart keyboard uses a design which actually has the fabric uh, kind of hard pressed into the device and it's by via impact. And, and what that means is it, the, the, the travel of the keys, it doesn't seem so concrete it doesn't seem so complete um, but with the chiclets style keyboard with a scissor uh, mechanism inside it the travel actually doesn't feel that bad it actually feels like how I would be typing it on a um, standard keyboard from Apple uh, that they package with their uh, uh, desktops anyway and that's actually a very much welcome change between these two devices because now I can actually tell if I'm actually typing something as opposed to this one where it's fabric and sometimes I kind of miss it because if you don't press down hard enough, you, you it just won't enter. Uh, the, the device actually won't register that particular click. But for this one, um, there is a particular uh, click, clickety clack uh, about it that I kind of uh, really makes me feel like I'm actually using a laptop more than I'm using an iPad Pro. Um, which is great and I feel that they kind of nailed it with this. It's I, it's a small arrangement, so it, it's kind of tiny uh, when you are trying to talk about typing experience, but both of them are equally tiny. So um, there's not much difference in terms of 
space or real estate when it comes to that particular experience but one thing that i can tell you straight up is that i definitely prefer the typing experience on this device uh, and not on this device it's, on almost all scales this device is going to beat it but i just have to compare that option the experience of using the touchpad uh, is smooth uh, this is actually uh, a great experience for me um, because i type a lot of emails correspondences plans tools uh, and it helps me a huge deal in terms of being able to uh, do a lot of work in it. Uh, it's, it's, I believe it's glass and it's, it's rather smooth. And in its usage, um, you won't be able to see much of it. But in terms of its uh, trackability, I've, I haven't had a problem with it. The only kind of thing that is kind of weird is that I can't activate certain things. So like say, for example, when I'm actually on notes, um, you will see that it, it doesn't come up as easily as I want to for the bottom tray, but it does actually activate it, uh, but not as easy as doing that. Uh, so that's one of the few differences in terms of using the particular trackpad uh, between this and the actual user interface of using it with the device. Uh, 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 in terms of using your finger with the device. Um, so we can tell that the OS is optimized for finger finger input, uh, but not so much yet with, it's still there, but it's sometimes not as intuitive as you want it to be. Um, but I didn't find it as big a problem. Um, the main thing that you want to do with this is that you actually have the ability now to actually select exactly where you want to type in your actual device. And that is a huge change that makes things a lot easier for me uh, when using this. Uh, and uh, it has gotten to the point where simply because of the addition of this touchpad, I don't bring my laptop out anymore. The iPad is what I actually take out because most of my work actually requires it anyway. Um, that said, the experience using a trackpad is great, but software-wise, it may not actually... Um, hold the candle to a full uh, experience on the, on the laptop. Now, the reason for that is the softwares haven't caught up, right? So um, there are certain things that when you're using with Microsoft Word or Excel or uh, any number of apps that require a lot of different options of input, um, you won't get to see the trackpad actually translate to a more uh, productive usage. Um, I think that this actually helps a lot in terms of typing, emailing, um, those kinds of um, uses, this device actually answers very, very well. The key here is um, thinking about how somebody wants to use the iPad Pro. And for some reason, Apple forgot that they had an, a pencil to care, to care for. Now, they did have it in terms of a... Um, in terms of a magnetic... Uh, arrangement with regards to the pencil and to the smart keyboard but uh, if, if, if anyone else knows this idea is a lot of other iPad Pro users you don't have a solution for keeping this device onto your actual iPad and that is actually extremely cumbersome so what did Logitech do? they came up with a solution where they simply allowed you to do this now I know that it's fully secured I don't have to think about it I don't have to hold it in a way that um, makes it ridiculous uh, because I had to be very careful when I was using this device but now that I'm using the Logitech Combo, Combo Touch I don't really care whether it's magnetic or not because it's not going to fall off and uh, I like the fact that I can have this all the time with me and I don't really have to worry about whether it's going to be there or not uh, I do have to have that worry if I'm using the Apple Smart Keyboard now there are some things that I don't really like about it right um, and it's something that um, nobody has solved and that is weight um, when you have a, a new device uh, that actually adds in this real estate this much real estate for it um, it becomes heavier and on top of that they didn't have Logitech doesn't have a solution that integrates the back to the keyboard in a way that actually protects the back of the iPad and at the same time um, is less weighty. So what do I mean by that? Now the new iPads come with magnetic backings that actually go onto the Magic Keyboard, but not so for the old iPads like my, the ones that I'm using. So 
it ha it has to be stored within a, a a frame and that frame is going to cost you some weight you will feel like there's an additional piece of weight it, it doesn't it doesn't feel so light anymore the ipad doesn't feel so light anymore but for the amount of use case that this new um, experience provides me i'm okay with it I'm, I'm actually really okay with the weight um that's one thing that i didn't really like about it what else do i not like about it um i can't fold i can't fold the keyboard back um so they don't tell you this but you see you just saw that right um the combo touch keyboard doesn't actually flex all the way around um and that i i didn't expect that i thought it would i thought it would but it didn't and it's actually quite uh weak because the the the, the keyboard itself is actually quite heavy right so the magnetic points on the apple ipad pro can actually support it but if you move it just a little bit it'll, it'll fall off right so you got to be careful about that particular usage so not a big fan of how that falls off but then once you know once you know about it it's not going to be that big a deal you're going to work yourself around that particular limitation um now the combo touch goes anywhere between 209 dollars to 229 dollars uh in singapore um the magic keyboard cost 439 dollars and the smart keyboard goes for about 200 dollars so all in all the combo touch is going to cost you the same as a smart keyboard which is the old version of the keyboard for the ipad pro but it's going to give you all the features of the magic keyboard and that's great in many different ways uh i get the full experience that i wanted to i gotta keep my ipad pro for a little while longer because i'd rather pay 200 dollars than come out with another two thousand dollars just to upgrade my entire ipad pro lineup which i think is what apple wants me to do anyways but i'm not gonna do it uh because it doesn't make sense because the ipad pro simply just works great with the new uh ipad os um is it a welcome change I suppose it depends on your use case. Um, would I recommend it for anybody who's not a huge typist uh, on a day-to-day -day basis? No, because it is heavy. And um, if I'm going to use the iPad more as a consumption device, as a media consumption device, or something that I draw on, as opposed to something that I type on, um, you don't really need this device. But if that is what you are going to do on a day-to-day -day basis, typing is a lot uh, uh, that you need to do this device you cannot live without um and that is where i'm coming from i think this is a huge welcome in between that particular um apple's uh, design aesthetic uh, and providing different accessories for them um i actually really like it because it's something that i thought apple had left me in the dust with uh, i thought they just like mm, screw it there's no way that i'm gonna make a new accessory just for people like me because i'm on the old design aesthetic anyway but logitech kind of thought about it and they actually i i i do believe that they actually have a partnership logitech and apple actually do have a partnership uh and i think that this actually bears a lot of fruit uh, because it helps that i have an option and that option even if it is going to cost me 200 dollars um solves everything that i need to do uh, with it um, and it is actually very welcome recommendation mixed uh, yeah, but because it fills up my use case I'm going to say yes um, and I'm going to say that this is actually a huge upgrade uh, from smart keyboard to the combo touch be simply because this portion of it changes your entire experience with the iPad Pro um, like I said, it's not. Uh, it's now my daily driver when I go around. Um, I'm. I'm no longer using my uh, my my uh, uh, my poor uh, laptop. It's literally just sitting right there, and it it hasn't come out for like a month now. Um, if you want that experience with your iPad Pro, uh, ten point five or Apple uh, iPads with the Touch uh, ID still active in it, there's no other option to go with but the combo touch.